Today we're going to look at Interact.js and how we can use it within our Rails application. Interact.js is simply a drag and drop library which supports resizing and multiple touch gestures and it makes it friendly for your mobile devices. So some of the features that we'll look at is the no drop where you're not allowed to drop it within a drop zone and a yes drop where you're able to drag and drop it within a container. And to install Interact.js on a Rails application, I'm going to use the Rails Assets. And this is an easy way where you can create a proxy between Bundler and Bower, so making and managing your JavaScript libraries will be much easier. So we can search for Interact.js, and then we can find the library and find out how to install it in our Rails application. And you'll see that it's as simple as including a gem in your gem file and pointing to the source railsassets.org. So in my gem file, I'll actually create a block where we have our source and then we point to the railsassets.org. And then within here, I'll call in my gem, the Rails Assets Interact, and this will point to that library on the railsassets.org site. Be sure to run bundle and restart your Rails application. And then within your application JavaScript file, you can just simply call require interact, and then it'll pick up the JavaScript library that we had loaded from our gem file. So to let you know a bit about this application, we have three different models. We have a food, which the food has a name, and then it also has a favorite boolean, which is a default to false. We then have some class methods for favorite foods, and then no opinion foods, where we pick if the favorite is set to true, and then also if the favorite is set to false. We then have a list of ingredients, which just takes in a name. We then have this recipe model, which is basically just a list of the different foods and their corresponding ingredients. And then within my visitors controller, I've just created a action called favorite foods, where we just loop through each one of the foods, which we have no opinion for, which is a list of foods that are by default set to false for the favorite option. And then we create a content tag with the food name. We give it a class of drag drop, and then we're going to pass in some data attributes to where we want to set this draggable to true. And this is just something that we'll use in the JavaScript in a minute to basically say that this diff container will be draggable. And then we want to pass in a URL. So whenever we drag one of our foods into the favorite foods drop zone, and we can update the record to then mark it as a favorite food. So we'll create this opinion on food endpoint, and then we'll pass in our food object. Then we'll have a diff tag, which will give an ID of favorite foods, and then we'll give it a class drop zone just for some styling. And once we mark a food as one of our favorites, we can then loop through each one of our favorite foods. You'll see that I'm just setting in this class can drop, which is what's triggered whenever we're dragging one of our foods and it's over the drop zone. So here we're calling a similar content tag div, but the only difference is that we add this can drop class. Back in our application JS file, we can paste in this bit of code, and I won't go into its details too much, but the idea is we're going to call interact on all of the data draggable equals trues, and then we're calling draggable, and then we set a few settings, and whenever we move, we will call this drag move listener. And this drag move listener is a function that will basically update the UI with the points of where this object is moving. So now we can call the document on Turbolinks load. So whenever we visit a page via the Turbolinks, we'll execute this option. And within here, we can call the interact. And then now we're referencing to our favorite foods div tag that we had created and then calling drop zone. We're telling what we are accepting for a drop. And this is going to be any of the data draggables set to true. So when we loop through our foods, we had set this data attribute draggable equals to true. And the overlap is basically how much within that box you have to be in there. So most of the item that you're dragging has to be within the drop zone. And then there's several different callbacks that we are given. So the callback that we're going to use first is the on drag enter. And this is when every object is dragged into the drop zone. We can create some different styling. So first we're going to add to our target, which is the drop zone. We're going to add the drop target. And then on the draggable item that you're actually dragging, then you're calling the related target, which references to that object. And then we're adding this class can drop. And then we're going to return this Ajax call to our application. 
So we're sending a Ajax get request and we're calling our related target. So this is the item that we're dragging and then we're getting the data attributes, the data URL and dot value. And this will return the data attribute URL that we set in our favorite foods loop. And in this case, because we're dragging the item into our favorite foods div, we're going to pass in this favorite is true parameter. And likewise, whenever we leave the drop zone, we want to basically call the same thing, but instead of setting the favorite food to true, we're going to set this to false. So we'll remove the class drop target from our drop zone, and then we'll also remove the can drop, because you have now basically dragged your draggable item outside of the drop zone. And then we'll call another Ajax get request, and this is going to point to the data attribute URL, and this time we're going to pass in the parameter favorite is false. And then we can set some options whenever we deactivate the on drop, meaning that the on drop function has been completed. So in our drop zone, we'll remove the drop active, and then we'll also remove the drop target. And I'm not going to go into the styling too much, but you can check out the visitors SESS file to see the different styles that we're using for the drag and drop functionality. And then in our Rails routes, we'll create a route to our opinion on foods controller action. And this is simply just, you know, I made up the slash food. The important bit is that we're passing in the ID of the food, and then we're getting the opinion on the food. And this is going to just point to a foods controller and to the action opinion on food. So here in the foods controller, in the opinion on food, you see that we have our at food and we're just setting this to the parameters find and we're getting the food based on the ID. And then we're updating the attribute favorite with the parameter that we got from our Ajax request. And then we're saving the food and then we're calling head okay because we don't need to really send a response, but we just want to send a HTTP okay. So coming into our application now, you'll see the list of foods that we have not yet marked as a favorite. And then we can just click and drag one of these over into our favorite foods. And you can see some of the styling change. Once we drop it, you'll see that it stays within here. And if we refresh the page now, we should see the settings stick. So now we see our realigned pizza and our spaghetti. And then our sushi is still down under the favorite foods. If we drag it out, and then refresh, you'll see that sushi now appears back up at the top. So we can bring in as many of these as we want, and we can also remove them as we need. So for now, I'll just keep sushi into my favorite list. Next, let's say if we have a list of ingredients that we have in our kitchen. However, we don't know what we can make with these ingredients. Wouldn't it be nice if we had a list of all the ingredients and we can just drag them into a drop zone and then based on the ingredients, we can have a list of all the different foods that we can create with them. So in our route, I'll go ahead and create another action. And this is just going to take us to the food slash what to cook. And this is going to hit the controller and want to cook. And then we'll have this what to cook path available to us. So in our visitors controller, we'll create another action called ingredients. And it'll look something similar to this, where you're just looping through each one of the ingredients that you have. And we're setting a content tag with the ingredient name. And we're sending the class to the drag drop again. And we're passing in some similar data attributes. Here we're passing in the draggable is true. So we will reference this in our JavaScript to make this contact div a draggable item. And then we're passing to the URL what to cook. And then we're also passing into our data attribute the ingredient, the ingredient ID. And the reason why we're passing in the ingredient ID here instead of into the URL, because we're going to have multiple items dragged into our drop zone, and we'll need to keep a list of all the ingredients that the user is either adding in or dragging out. So whenever they perform an action, we can send this back to the server with an array of all the ingredient IDs. We can then create a have ingredients drop zone, and we just have a tag in here that just says ingredients I have. And then we can create a panel, and this just has an ID of foods, and by default it'll say sorry you may go hungry, meaning that based on the ingredients you've added, you cannot create any kind of food. And then in the controller, we can have this what to cook action, and this is just going to set an instance variable foods, and the idea here is as we get our ingredients, and we're going to pass it in as a parameter ingredients. We want to check what foods 
contains these ingredients, or at least what food is completely possible to make with the list of ingredients passed through. So first we check the food and its recipes and we get all the ingredients IDs and we create a set of this. We check if the subset of this has the ingredients and by default the Ajax request is going to pass in the ingredients as a array of strings. But we want to make sure that if no ingredients are passed that we at least have an empty array. And then we want to convert each one of the items to a integer and then convert the array over to a set so we can use the subset. So this will basically check to see if the ingredients of a particular food is contained within the ingredients of the ones that you have available. And then we come to the fun bit where we're adding in some more JavaScript. So I'll just paste this in here. And the important bit is we are calling this in the turbo links load function. So we are setting this ingredients to an empty array. And now we create our drop zone to the have ingredients. And notice that we are just creating a new interaction on the drop zone. However, we don't need to add any additional or new code to what makes an item draggable. So here we're still accepting all the elements that has this stated draggable set to true. And then in the on drag enter, the main things that we are changing is one, we are creating this ingredients push, and this will just inject into this ingredients array. So if it's our first item, we'll take this empty array and then have one item in there. And then again, the related target, that refers to the item that you're dragging. And in our case, it's going to refer to the ingredient. And then we're getting the attributes, the data ingredient, and then the value of that data attribute. And this should be the ID number because within our view, we passed in the ingredient data attribute as the ingredient.id. And then we make an Ajax request. And again, we're pointing to the item that we're dragging and we're getting the data URL and the value of that URL that we're going to get. And then we're passing in the parameters ingredients. And we're setting this to our JavaScript array ingredients. So as you add in more ingredients, it's going to add the ingredients ID into this ingredients array. And then we're going to pass this whole array over to our application. And then when you drag an ingredient outside of the drop zone, we basically need to remove it from the array. And then we also need to update the list of what we can cook. So that means that we had to make another Ajax request back to our application. But this code here is where we're setting the ingredients. And then we're basically just calling this jQuery function, which we're looping through each one of the ingredient items. And then we're going to return the item as long as it's not equal to the data attribute ingredients ID value that we had passed in. And this would be the item that just left the drop zone. And then again on the drop deactivate, we have the same bit of code where we're just removing and cleaning up some of the UX UI view. So do note that on our controller action, what to cook, and notice that we're not calling the head OK because we want to have a server generated JavaScript whenever the what to cook is called. And that's going to be the what to cook JSERB. So under our foods in the view, we have our what to cook JSERB. And within here, we check to see if our foods.size is greater than zero. And that basically means that we have found some foods. And if you remember back in the ingredients HTML file, we have this diff tag foods, and we're just going to render out a a list of all the different foods. So this will call the partial food for each one of the food and the foods. Otherwise, if no foods were returned, we'll update our element and replace everything with the same you may go hungry list item. So now if we go to our ingredients page, we have our list of ingredients and then we have our drop zone with the ingredients I have. And then we have our panel with our list items that says currently, sorry, you may go hungry. So we can start adding in some of these items. So let's say if we want to make a pizza, we know we need some flour and some tomato sauce, some cheese, and probably some pepperoni. And you can see that now we have the ingredients to make pizza. What if we add ground beef in here? You'll see that now we can make some spaghetti. If we remove some items, you'll see that it automatically updates our panel here. And now we cannot make any food. We can also drag in some stuff to make the sushi. And here you'll see that now we have the ingredients to make sushi. And because it is a favorite, we also get this additional message. It's also one of your favorites. 
and I haven't played around with this JavaScript library too much. However, I have found that it does work pretty good with Turbolinks, and I've not run into any issues with it so far. So definitely check it out if you need the drag and drop functionality. And definitely check out the Interact.js documentation because it's going to have a lot of different functionality that we may have not covered in this episode, but that may be able to help solve your issues. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.